Even when you feel low, you can still go Even when you feel slow, you can still go Even when there's no hope, you can still go I never answer to no man, I still go Go, go Yo, 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 what's going on, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, as we always say, it's your hostess with the mostest, it's PKR, Pastor Keenan Riley, back with another episode of, you guessed it, People Suck, that's right, but you gotta love them anyways, and man, that is so difficult to do on some days of the week, mostly days that end in Y, nonetheless, we have to do it, Um, as Jesus would say, we have to do it, so... Uh, Thanks, Jesus. A guy that I struggle to love the most uh, is sitting beside of me. No, I'm just playing. Uh, he's all right most of the time. Uh, he's sitting beside of me. It's Nicky Nick. Uh, Nick, how you doing, man? What's going on? Uh, what's happening? Don't go into all yeah, of life. Uh, uh, do you really want me to tell you how it's going? Yeah, yeah but, do not derail the first uh, three dude. minutes of this show and take it over. <laughs> um, but hey, uh, but how's, how's life outside of life? Hey, you know, as Joel Olstein says, I'm living my best life today. <laughs> just with a smile on my face, grit my teeth just rolling with it and if we all had 40 mil in a ferrari we could Amen. say we could say that as well Amen. living my best life uh today out here in front of you and uh yeah there you go so we pray no matter where you are uh india bangladesh or um you know baton rouge louisiana maybe who knows um we pray that you are blessed and highly favored we pray that uh the week has been good for you and uh man i tell you what it feels kind of crazy just to do two episodes in a row um right. yeah maybe uh yeah, maybe we're back at this thing and know what we're doing we don't we never yeah, will we don't. Yeah, um, there's not even any visual for this episode yeah. <laughs> we're, 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 i was gonna say rolling, but... we just throw gum at the wall and hope it yeah. sticks man that's what we do so um today in this moment in time man we're talking about um what we talked about today during certain service which was literally to go trays or to go boxes um and hey man i've got a to go box right now sitting looking at me with a couple of uh cream filled donuts fantastic Mm -hmm. uh god makes great things in this world i feel like sometimes uh and yeah man so i'm looking at these wonderful cream filled donuts but to go boxes um you know, we, we, we talked today about how we can walk in with nothing or we can walk in with just a little something. Uh, and if we offer it into God's hands, how much more he can multiply that and, and give it. Um, the crazy part is, is that we referenced uh, and what we said today was the probably one of the most popular Bible stories that there is out there. When I say Jesus feeding the 5,000 or Jesus and the fish or mm-hmm. Jesus and the fish and bread. Most people, whether you Jesus are and Captain D's. yeah, yeah, man, that sound's amazing too. Sound pretty good, uh, four piece fish, man, no fries, no, no, nothing else, just the fish. Anyways, um, but when we reference that, you don't really have to be a Bible scholar. I feel like you don't have to be in church for twenty years. Uh, you don't. You, I feel like you could even be an atheist and know this story. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's you know it's it talks about taking the uh, the five loaves and the two fish. And literally, like, going crazy with this and multiplying and feeding a crowd where the Bible says it was 5,000-plus women and children. Um, You know, as we gave the reference today, like, just think about if every man had a wife and if every wife had a child. Now, that's 15,000 people running around. Now, is that the case? Could be more, could be less. We're not for sure. Um, but it's kind it's of crazy. More than 5, definitely, though. yeah, definitely more than five k. Mm-hmm. And to think about how five loaves of bread and two two fish um, can literally feed, let's just say, five thousand plus people, is beyond amazing. Um, and again, it's a great story. It's it's a popular story. But as we kind of dove into today, we talk about how the principles that come from that story is probably the hardest. To implement as Christians and, and to follow as Christians. And, you know, one of the very first things we talked about was was looking at what we have in the physical, you know, uh, money, house, car, whatever, time, job, uh, education, whatever the case may be. Like, we always look at what we have in the physical. And uh, I I don't think there's nothing wrong, Nick. You may speak differently. Uh, I, don't, I, <laughs> I don't think there's nothing wrong with desiring more and wanting mm-hmm. more. I think there's nothing wrong. I think you need to be appreciative. It, become, yeah, it can become obsessive, though, I think. Yeah, I think you can be appreciative of what you have and still mm-hmm. desire more. Um, but, yes, I do, I, the, the unsafe side of it is to say 
it's obsessive. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I always going to I'm always going to want more, need more, desire more. That's whenever it becomes a little bit on the crazy side of things. Um, but but you know the, the the principle that we talked about that a lot of people struggle with is looking at what they have and then thinking that they don't have anything to give. Now, whether that's in the church reference, whether that, again, is it your job or in a relationship or financially or whatever, um, it's kind of crazy to think that that we oftentimes look at what we don't have. We talk about an attitude of gratitude, right? We talk about being thankful. We talk about being grateful. We talk about these things, and it's not just in the Christian world. It's, it's everywhere. Um, you hear it all the time, especially like in motivational podcasts and things like that. Be grateful, be thankful, you know, pick one thing and be thankful for it today. And that's going to set your mindset. And I I don't know. I know I harp on you a lot about, you know, negativity and we call it nicotivity and things like that. But it's like, you know, I I feel like that there are still a lot more negative people out there in the world than you. I mean, for sure. Um, You know, but it's like, why do we why do you think we gravitate or we focus on the deficiency or what we don't have or Things like that versus, you know, being thankful or grateful and saying, hey, man, uh, you know, like we talked about today, we got that car, we got that house, we got that, we got those, like, it may not be the best, it may not be this, it may not be this, but hey, guess what? God's still blessed, he still worked, he still covered, he still came through, he's still good. Um, but you know, oftentimes in myself, I get into this rut, I think you do, I think we all do, like, Mm -hmm. we get into it where it's like, man, um, we sit back and go, you know, why, 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 why can't we get this, or why can't we have mm-hmm. this, or, or, yeah, this would be nice, you know. And it's like, like we always, day. yeah, we always focus <laughs> yeah. on the what we don't have. Mm-hmm. Why is that? Yeah, I mean, I, I really do think. I mean, again, I, I can't speak on how it was, you know, a hundred years ago, five hundred years ago, whatever. But I hope you can. I know, yeah. No, I won't. I won't. I won't even try. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, like, you know, if you think modern day, uh, especially in America, you know, again, I'm not exactly sure how it is in your culture. I know we have people from India and other countries listening. Uh, but I know here in America, Bangladesh, you know, yeah, Bangladesh all, all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I do know that we, you know, here in America, we have um, the best, new, brightest stuff shoved in our face every single day. Um, you know, we're, we're looking, you know, we're driving down the road. And we're it looking usually at comes cars. from China. Yeah, it does. It does. It does do that. Not for long if Project 2025 takes place. <laughs> we won't get into that. Oh, man. Uh, but again, you know, we, we, we look at, we, we got all this stuff shoved in our face every single day, you know, on TV, commercials. And I mean, and I, I'm one to talk. I'm in marketing. You know, I understand that you know you're, you're trying to get the new product out there you're trying to make the most money you're trying to be competitive you're trying to do this do that whatever um but you know again i think that's why we struggle so much with it is that we always you know we're, we're shown this picture of this happy family driving this 2025 vehicle mm-hmm. you know they're they're happy you know they're they're their family's happier than you safer than you you know all these sorts of things is what these commercials tell us um you know we, we look at the the new iphone when it comes out you know it, it has exactly the same features as last year but it's got this one new feature that's going to make you stand out from everybody else you know it's got all these different things that we talk about and this stuff is just constantly fed to us through social media through television radio if anybody listens to that i think some people do still uh you know we we have all kinds of people you know out there just being you know shown stuff 24 7 365 and then we um also fall prey to something called um uh, there's two different versions of it i'm gonna get a little psychological for a minute so step back Uh, you know it's called upward and downward social comparison um you know where we are you know upward comparison we're looking at someone who has more than us and you know comparing ourselves to that and wondering you know what we're doing why we're not doing better all these sorts of things and downward social comparison i I may have these backwards but i'm going to speak on it the way i am anyway uh downward social comparison is when you look at somebody who has less than you and you feel superior to them so you know you're looking at someone who has less than you or did worse than you and you're feeling superior to them but then you're looking up at people who did better than you and you're feeling inferior to them um, and that's this constant cycle that we are in. You know, we're always going to try and keep up with the Joneses. We're always wanting to be the best, have the most, look the best, you know, be the brightest, have the newest, all these sorts of things. And, you know, I, I think I've had this conversation before is that, you know, these things that we buy, these things that we want, these things that we desire, mm-hmm. it's not because we need them. It's not because we even want them. It's because we want other people to look at us with them right we we want you know we want to be you know we, we look at that person driving that new range rover down the road we're like man it'd be nice i bet you know they'd be so nice to drive one of those because everybody would look at me and be like wow you know it's not because we're looking at that person and saying wow we're thinking that if we get it 
people would look at us and mm. say, wow. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's just this wild um, thing that was actually spoken to me on a radio one day. So people do still listen to the radio. Uh, but 94, yeah, so. listen, this is crazy. 94% of people have access to a radio in the world. That's, that's amazing to me. 94%. So, yeah, go ahead, man. Yeah, go no, ahead with your, with your deal. Yeah. Um, but I yeah, just wanted I, to throw yeah. that out there. <laughs> Random fact. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, but yeah, I, I think, you know, that's a big reason. You know, we, we, we struggle in this society so much with comparison. You know, we think we have to look a certain way, talk a certain way, behave a certain way, and shoot. Those are things that the Pharisees and Sadducees and the religious people of the day still <laughs> shove in Christians' faces. Yeah. You know, you have to look a certain way, be a certain way, all these sorts of things. And our culture is just so dissatisfied with being ourselves, with being authentic, with giving what we have and being who we are and being content. Mm-hmm. And I, I do think a big chunk of that is because we are, are we have stuff shoved in our face every day. Yeah. Um, and that, that voice in our head, that discontent in our minds that's saying, you know, you, you would be better if you had this. You'd be cooler if you had this. You'd be, you know, whatever, you know, if you had this, did this, look like this, all mm-hmm. these sorts of things. You know, we, you know, it, it's such a, it's such a prevalent thing throughout our society. You know, it's not just cars. It's, you know, we have teenage girls who are looking at models thinking, oh, if I looked like that, I, I'd, I'd be more loved. And, or yeah. we, we have, you know, these teenage boys who are looking at that, you know, if, man, if I had that car, I'd get more chicks. So, you know, all these sorts of things that we're looking at where we're getting told lies because we see it in movies. We see it in TV shows. We see it in marketing. We see it all over the place because we can't get off our phone. Phones. We can't stay off the internet. Um, and, you know, we, we have our friends, you know, our, our new friend gets something because their parents are better off. They get a brand new car instead of, you know, when they turn 16, they're getting a brand new vehicle. When you turn 16, you're getting this old beater piece of junk car. And mm-hmm. you're like, man, you know, I, you know the, he's getting, he has so many more friends. People are, you know, oh, wow, look at your truck. Look at your truck. Look at this. And I'm, nobody's looking at my car. Nobody's looking at paying attention to me. Yeah. You know, and we want people to pay attention to me. We want that. And, and so we, we try, we go into debt thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars in debt to get that next vehicle to, to, to go on that vacation to get the likes to get the reaction to get the affection um, because we don't have that inner peace that comes from Jesus yeah you know we don't have that contentment that comes from Jesus I'm pretty sure that uh, we've said this time and time again that you know comparison is the quickest stealer thief of joy that there is and if you start comparing the life you have to the life that you want or the or the life that somebody else has man you're going to be pretty down and depressed uh, pretty quick mm. and you're going to start striving to to get things and live a lifestyle that that is not really meant or accommodated or suited for you. Um, and and with these with the disciples at this point in time, uh, just to kind of set the stage for a second, um, you know, Jesus is sailing in and he's dropping anchor, and the Bible says he sees this crowd that is a huge, massive crowd, and says that he has compassion for them, and he starts preaching to them and teaching them and, and healing people. And so, you know, revival's breaking out, good things are happening, and, and then all of a sudden, you know, the sun starts going down. The Bible is very clear that they are in a desolate place where there's not a lot of things at. and, and that there's the, still a dollar general there. Uh, somewhere, I guarantee <laughs> it, man. And there's a there's a there's probably a, a DoorDash person that is, like, waiting at the bit. Uh to, to, to drop some off, yeah, to drop something off. So, uh, but you know, the 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 disciples start reminding Jesus, "Hey, man, uh, it's starting to get late. Like, we we need to shoot these people on out and get them going home so they can stop by the markets, get something to eat, so on and so forth." And Jesus has this answer. He looks at them and he says, "You are going to feed them." And and their response is what we just talked about. But all we have is five loaves of bread and two pieces of fish. That's what we have. That we have five loaves of bread. That's all we have. Mm-hmm. Big and, butt. Yeah, and it's Big like you, you think about it, and and it's like when, when God speaks to us about something and says, I need you to do, or I need you to go, or I want you to be a part, or I want you this, and it's like our mentality is not thank you, Lord, for, for choosing me, or thank you, Lord, for allowing me, or thank you, Lord, for just letting me be a part of this process. It, it it's it goes back to oh, Lord, I don't have you know the street smarts, or I don't have the words, or I'm not a very good prayer warrior, or I'm not this, or I'm not that, and all I have is and, and if we're honest, like that is a it's a humanistic type response that we have that that it combats it it combats mm-hmm. failing in in another words, it's like we're putting terms on our failing before we even fail. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's, uh, Lord, you can call me to do this, but let me tell you, uh, before, mm-hmm. before I even get started, this is, uh, this is how bad it's going to be because this is all I have. 
Um, and, and I feel like it's just, that's naturally where our mind goes. Mm -hmm. We, we, we try to disqualify ourselves, even though God is calling us and he'll, and he will help us to get to the point. Does that mean we'll fail? We'll fall short? Absolutely. But he will help us get to the point where we need to be. But, you know, we start out the conversation with what we Mm -hmm. don't have. With the but. (laughs) With the but. Yeah, Mm -hmm. pretty much. I mean, with the but. And, um, you know, just to read it to you really quick, uh, with what we posted today or with what the, the one of the preaching points that we talked today is is but all I have, which is the quote, but all I have is not a reason to save, it's a reason to give. It's shifting the responsibility from your hands to God's hands. And you know, I mean in our hands we can multiply. We can um business people do it every day. Yeah, they do and, and to a to a certain degree and extent. Is it ethically done right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we, we won't go into question about that. But it can be done to a certain extent. With God, whenever we put the responsibility in God's hands, when we say, All right, God, here's my here's my life, here's my heart, here's my here's my mind, here's my you know, here's my money, here's my job, here's my whatever, my relationships, you know, whatever the case is, at that moment in time we're pu- we're putting it into the hands of the Creator. And and the creator of all of this, of, you know, of everything you see, touch, taste, feel, smell, whatever, like, you know, God had a hand in this somewhere along the way. Um, and think about that. You know, we gave the we gave the example today of fast food, of of trusting somebody behind the scenes to make your burger, make your fries and shoot it out the window at you. And you pay for that food and that service. Mm-hmm. OK. And if it's not right. If it's not right, you're like, well, you know, you get mad, you get frustrated, and you want this and that and the other. And it's like, we treat God the same way. We treat God like a fast food restaurant. We roll through, we talk to the box, we tell him what we won't need, we expect to pull up to window two, and what we prayed for should be just given to us out the window. And Exactly how we ordered it. Yeah, exactly. exactly and it's like, prayed it. Yeah, and we look in the bag, and it's like, whoa, bro, I didn't want this, I didn't need this, I didn't want this, and this is what I've got. And you know, it's like then we want to get lost in the sauce and go in and and start like fighting with God about, hey, uh, I didn't pray like this, I didn't want this, I didn't need this, and you know, and it's like we're we're looking and going, wait a minute, like if we're going to trust nineteen, twenty year old kids to make a hamburger and fries and throw it out the window at us, how much more should we trust the Maker and Creator of heaven? with our prayers mm-hmm. and with our deficiencies or what we lack in. Yeah, exactly. You know, when we pray for something, you know, and it's, I, I don't want to say the majority of the time, but a lot, you know, a lot of times we pray for something and it, it comes out completely the opposite of what we asked for, what we ordered, what we, you know, however you want to say that uh, going on with that example there. But, you know, we, we oftentimes do pray for things and, you know, we, we expect, I think, you know, when we, the, I think the problem is that we, we come to God praying with an expectation of how it's supposed to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's just like, you know, I, I'm going to pray to God and he's going to provide it this exact way. Um, you know, on my timetable this way, you know, because he's a good God. If he loved me, he would do it this way. You know, yeah, he, he, he knows what's best for way. me. Yep. If he knows what's best for me, then I, you know, I, he would know that I know what's best for me. So he's going to, he's going to do it this way. Uh, but then, you know, we, we get, as you said, lost in the sauce, you know, we, we get our bag, we open it up, our prayers answered, but in a completely different way than we thought, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, it's just, it gets us confused. It gets us anxious. It gets us frustrated. It gets us, you know, all these sorts of things. And we, we sit, th- we sit there and we say things like, you know, how could you do this to me, God? This is your fault. You screwed me over. You this, that, and the other. You know, what are you doing? You know, and we, we forget that faith that made us pray in the first place. You know, that faith in, in that belief that God can handle our problems and can answer our prayers. And, um, but we, we think that we know better. You know, and there's so many different times that, you know, I think that we could go back to the Bible and look at, um, you know, and I think back to, I may have even referenced this last week, but uh, we go back in the Bible to, you know, when um, they were wondering, the Israelites were wandering in the wilderness, and they, you know, the Israelites were going to overthrow Aaron and Moses because they thought they knew better. You know, like, we, we were better in Egypt. We're going to take a bunch of people, and we're going to go back to Egypt where, you know, we had this, 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 and that. Um, you know, and, but, you know, and Moses and Aaron were trying to follow God's plan, and because the Israelites, you know, looked, they, they saw with their eyes instead of their heart, that yeah. was what put them in that situation in the first yeah. place. Absolutely. You know, they, they went out to this land, they saw the 
giants. They saw these, uh, you know, creatures and these people that were going to, you know, they thought with their eyes looked like they could destroy all of them. And so they came back and reported with fear based on what they saw yeah. instead of what God spoke. And then we had Joshua and Caleb who had the faith to believe that no matter what they saw, God was going to take care of them. Yeah. Um, and we, we get so guilty of that. You know, we, we all base everything on what we can see, the outcomes that we can see in our minds where we, we always say it all the time, you know, we have to put pen to paper to make it make sense. You know, we do a finance financial plan say, we can't afford this. We can't do that. I can't afford to tithe this month. You know, we got this expense going out. This is going out. You know, we, we put everything down where we can see it and make sense mm-hmm. of it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, again, God doesn't work on that timetable. God doesn't work on that realm of, or that plane of reality. Uh, you know, we, God sees things. You know, we, we have to take, think of God as this, this entity that can step outside of our timeline and see, you know, what happened hundreds of thousands of years ago as well as hundreds of thousands of years from now. Mm-hmm. You know, he can see everything as it's happening. He knows that if you make this decision, you're going to split off into this path and then he's going to have to redirect you to get back onto this path. He knows that if you make this decision, this is what's going to happen. You know, these, all these roots and branches that are possible out there, God sees every single one of them. He knows what would happen and what could happen. Yeah. And we limit God to what we can see in front of us. Yeah. We limit God to, to what we can see. You know, God, if, if this happens, if you answer my prayer this way, this is what's going to happen. If I do this, this is what's going to happen. Um, you know, and what we, again, we, we're limiting God. We're limiting an, 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 an immense, eternal, uh, Alpha Omega, you know, entity to what we can understand with our minds. You know, mm-hmm. I talked about with the youth on Wednesday night about how, you know, the, how God made the sun supposedly stand still in the sky for, for Joshua and the warriors as they were fighting. Um, but, you know, as we know back then, Science, or back then, they the people thought that the um, sun revolved around the earth. Mm. Uh, that was kind of how science and history said. You know, the people thought that the sun was revolved around the earth, but we found out, you know, with science that the earth revolves around the sun. So when it says that the sun stopped moving, we have to think that the earth stopped moving. Yeah. Um, and, and if you think about that, you know, modern science says that if the earth were to ever stop moving because of the direction and speed we're moving, everybody would just fly off and smash into the wall. Uh, but again, God was able to, you know, control what we understand. He was able to take what we understand and throw it out the window because he's God. He created science. He created these things. But again, we, we limit God to what we can see, to what we can understand. We try to use science to explain God. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we're trying to explain all these things in these ways and that we can understand, but God operates outside of that realm of understanding. We want things done this way, but God says, if you just let me do it my way, it'll be better for you in the long run, and right. it will help other people in the process. Yeah, we, I mean, we, we try to make it make sense, and that's, that's where we truly get into trouble. Ad is that we try to rationalize everything through what we see and um and and again we say this all the time here at fruition like if it makes sense it doesn't take faith if if you you know the difference uh, i thought a really good point today was was that there is a difference between giving and sacrifice you know giving you won't miss but sacrifice hurts when mm-hmm. you give uh and and that that is like where we have to stop rationalizing what we see, what makes sense to us in our minds. You know, the the disciples are looking out over this huge crowd, and they're going, "How is five loaves of bread and two fish going to feed this many people?" Mm-hmm. Because they're seeing, but they're not seeing. Mm-hmm. You know, they're seeing with physical eyes, but not spiritual eyes. Because you know, Jesus at this point, man, was like, I-, I can't imagine, and I said this today, I feel like, I can't imagine like watching Jesus heal, deliver, set free, preach, teach, all of that good stuff, and watch these demons being cast out and all these people being healed, and then imagine mm-hmm. looking at Jesus and going, there's not enough food here, no, you know. You can't and feed them. Yeah, you can heal them, like, deliver them, and set them free, but, but you, you can't, can't feed them. And, and I'm thinking to myself, like, where, you know, where where are we like these are people who roll with Jesus, and they were still struggling with physically faith. seeing. Yes, what he was yes, doing. and it's like so. Where where are we at in twenty twenty four today, right now, that we can't physically see? You know, Jesus in body just rolling through and and causing revival after revival. But we have to depend upon word the word of God. We have to depend upon preachers and teachers. We have to depend upon leaders and you know just different areas, man, to be fed with this with this word of God to be able to experience movements like that and and you know for them to sit at that moment and go man i don't know how we're going to feed these people and he's like you're going to feed them but give me what you've got Mm -hmm. and so it's like you're going to feed them but give me what you got and it's like well jesus you're not making sense right now Mm -hmm. i'm going to feed them but i'm giving you what i got so how am i going to feed them and it comes by giving him what you've got so therefore he can multiply it and 
The second part of the principle that that we talked about a lot today is something that, again, all of us, every single one of us struggle with. I get it. I understand. But watch. It says the Bible says that that he took the bread and fish, that he turned towards heaven. He looked towards heaven and he said, thank you, God. He gave thanks for what he did have. He gave thanks Mm -hmm. for what he received. So listen. It says, complaining will leave you just as broke, angry, frustrated, hungry, sick, and defeated as when you started. That's the that's the principle. Like, you know, complaining is not going to fix anything whatsoever. It's not. Mm-hmm. And, and we, I feel like we as people, not just Christians, but as people, man. Massive complainers. Massive complainers mm-hmm. about everything. It doesn't matter what it is. It's, it's cold like, in here. It's too hot it, in here. It it's is. Too, yeah. And it's like we, it's like this world was not formed to fulfill your comfort okay Mm -hmm. it's like you can't if we had a thermostat on this world we we would not have the plants we i mean we wouldn't be here uh let's be honest (laughs) i mean i mean like you know if we had a dial on when it rained and when the sun came out and you know there's people who love winter people who love summer there's people who love fall there's people who love spring and it's like there's a reason why there's four seasons there's a reason why there's different temperatures and climates there's a reason why there's snow and rain there's there's a reason why like there's a reason for all of this and for us to like sit back and be like well i hate this and i don't like this or i don't want to be a part of this or i'm not this and i'm not that i tell people all the time like god has such a sense of humor that literally the thing that you look at god and you're like i will not do that like i Mm -hmm. die and then god's like oh yes you will Mm -hmm. you know he's like just for pure fun um you know it doesn't matter like i always said to myself i'm like man i'm like i I ain't going to go work in Louisville. Why would I work in Louisville? Louisville's just a, 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 a major, I say a major city in Kentucky, but uh, I'm like, you know, I'll never be doing that. And what does the Lord do? Hey, you got a job interview. It's up in Louisville. Guess what? Now, guess where I'm driving every day, five days a week, you know, because I'm like, for his glory. Yeah, right. Like, you know, it's like, I'm thinking to myself over here going, you know, why would you ever tell God no? Because God will literally turn it around where you'll have to. Yeah, God, you I know? will never be a millionaire. I just want to listen oh, to that. Right, God, I will, no, I will never. never do anything yeah, with no. that money, you know, yeah. blah, 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 so on. But anyways, like, thanks, like things like that where I'm like, we spend so much time complaining. We, we spend so much time complaining. And, and we talked about this even before we got on air with – you know, just with people staying in their own lane and worrying about themselves. And, and, and it's like if you spent half the time working on yourself, working on working on your dreams and aspirations as what you did trying to find out dirt and gossip and whatever about somebody else, it's like how much better would you be? Mm-hmm. You know, how, how much better would you feel? How, how much how much further along would you be in life if that was the case? Um and and so I, I found it like to be a good principle that Jesus looked towards the sky and he and he thanked God for what he did have. And for us, like looking around today, like do we have millionaires and do we have, you know, people that are well off, like, uh, you know, inside of this church? It's like, absolutely not, man. We got people who are pretty decent, but we don't have people that are like just, you know, killing it in life or nothing like that. And it's like, but here's the message that I gave them today and that and that I think we can all get behind. It's like, we all have things we can be thankful for. Mm-hmm. Uh, we all have things we can be thankful for. Like, you can just start down the list and be like, man, what's one thing I'm thankful for today? Hey, I got up this morning, got the breath of life in me today. Being able to get up out of bed, that's a fantastic deal. Because you know what? Like, we take so much for granted that's the crazy part to me is that we take so much for granted because we get up out of bed every morning and it's like, oh man, my back hurts a little bit. My shoulders hurt, whatever, you know, or like, oh, I got to get up and go to work. Did you know there's somebody in this world that cannot get out of bed? They are bed ridden. Like they cannot get out of bed without assistance. They cannot get out of bed without something. And here we are fussing about getting out of bed you know what no, i mean no, i think about that guy that was in the iron lung like up until a, yeah. couple, a couple months ago when he died yeah like, like think about mm-hmm. that like he did nothing but lay in a box all day long every single day and here we are we we, we complain we complain about being able to get out of bed oh man uh, you know oh, i gotta go to work today you know well, hey guess what man you got a job you know what i'm saying oh man i tell you what gotta go gotta go do this this afternoon like hey you've got the ability Mm -hmm. to be able to go and do it like here's the thing about it man it's like when jesus turns towards heaven and he goes thank you lord that should always be our heart posture 
I suck at it sometimes. Mm-hmm. I know you do too. I know there's a lot of people. Yeah, your, your wife was down here pointing at both of us when you I, said that we were complainers. I, I know. <laughs> she was like pointing to me and you at the same time. It was, was so like, funny <laughs> yesterday because I told her I, we were texting back and forth about something, and I said, uh, I said, I sent her the uh, point, the slide that I was going to do, and I said, I'm going to preach about this tomorrow. And she said, Do you need me to preach it and you listen? And I said, <laughs> I'll go back and I'll listen twice, yeah. okay? And and she's like, I, you know, I get it, and you know, we were laughing about it, but yeah, I mean, like we all suck at it like we all complain about something it's too hot it's too cold it's whatever we complain about food we complain about people like we complain we're complainers Mm -hmm. but but with the right heart position we're not going to get it right all the time but with the right heart position i feel like we could do a lot better job at it Mm -hmm. you know thank you lord for man for a meal today you know what i'm saying like thank you lord like hey do i need to be eating these donuts right now nick probably not but you know what thank you lord for at least because I guarantee you there's somebody in this world right now that's going, God, I would love a donut. Mm-hmm. I would love anything right now. Like I like I would love anything to eat right now. And it's like now I get to look and go, Hey man, thank you, Lord. I mm-hmm. got something to eat. Thank you, Lord, I got a bottle of water. Thank you, Lord, we're able to do a podcast. Thank you, Lord, that we have the health to be able to do this. You know, it's like you if you get so small on the gratitude list of like where you're just like, Man, you know what? I'm thankful. Y'all can't see it because uh, we don't have uh, visual yeah, today. Yeah. Something else I, to complain about, but it's fine. <laughs> I, I, I'm holding a baby wipe in my hand right now yeah. uh, because I'm eating chocolate filled, cream filled, or chocolate covered cream filled donuts. I'm going to say thank you, Lord, for a for a baby wipe because paper towels aren't enough. Paper, <laughs> but you're right. Paper towels are not enough. But if I didn't have that, what would I be doing? I'd be over here like wrote, like my hands would be sticky and everything else along the way. Like here's the deal. Here's what I'm trying to say. I'm not I'm not trying to make fun of it or light of it, but like if we get down to the simplest forms of gratitude, mm-hmm. you know, being thankful for the simplest things. Um, I heard a preacher say one time, man, like like we, like we've just become so ungrateful. It's mm-hmm. not that God hasn't it's not that God hasn't become any less good. Yeah. We've become ungrateful. Mm-hmm. We we expect we expect like I expect to leave this church and make it home this afternoon. Mm-hmm. I expect that. I've become ungrateful in that aspect because you know what? God doesn't have to allow me to make it home. God doesn't have to allow me to go to work. God doesn't have to allow me to wake up. God doesn't have to allow me to do anything. Mm-hmm. You know, and 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 we become ungrateful to such an extent that when we do have a little we're like we're looking at the lord going i need some more you mm-hmm. know and he's like you're you're not giving what you have well if i have if i give it then i don't have if anything I had more i could give what i yeah, have yeah exactly and that's the that is the that i'm glad you said that that is the 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 fight that we have b- b- between ourselves our flesh and our faith on a daily basis of if i had more i would give more and Jesus says, "Give what you have, and I'll give you more." Mm-hmm. And it's this, it's this uh, uh, tug of war back and forth between faith and, and, and between flesh every single day. Going, well, mm-hmm. it doesn't make sense, and take faith, and so on and so forth. And it's a battle we'll be yeah. fighting to the end of time. And I think um, you know, as this message was kind of reminding me of, uh, I was reading a book, uh, Craig Rochelle, uh, and in this book, I made a post about it um, a couple of weeks ago. But you know, he, he's you know, I was, the post I made was talking about how we're very fearful. You know, how we we as Christians are constantly living in fear. Um, you know, fear of all kinds of different things. And one of the biggest ones that it hit me, and this is the one that kind of prompted me to write it, was that um, how how fearful we're afraid of living on ninety percent of our income, so we don't give ten percent to God. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that that was one thing that just really really hit me because you know we we think you know living on ninety percent of your income. Um, how many people like the, the fact that people struggle to live on 90 percent of their income right you know just the the idea that we're so afraid you know because we we've gone into debt we've gone into this we've done this whatever uh but you know we're, we're so afraid of not being able to survive on 90 percent of our income that we won't even give 10 percent to god yeah um you know and i think we we it's it's, it's hard because I'm, I'm trying to think of exactly where to go with it but you you just we we as human beings are so prompt to complain because you know we we don't want to give until we have more, uh, but you know we're already not using what we have well. Uh, right. you, know, we're, we, you know, as the Bible says, you know we have to be faithful over a little before God blesses us with yeah. more. Um, and you know we're constantly you know we're being unfaithful with the little that we have or what you know mm-hmm. we could what we would consider you know going back to you and what you said about being thankful for everything. You know, I mean the fact that you know we we have decent jobs that pay decently well. You know, compared to you know some people who are out here. You know, I mean we you, you could go on Facebook right now and find a, a single mother or a single father who is barely making ends meet because you know they're they got three kids and they're trying to work a 
job at McDonald's and work a job at Burger King, work a job at Taco Bell all in the same week because yeah. they can't make ends meet. They right. can't make rent because of how crazy it is right now. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and then, you know, like you, it's just, it's so crazy to get, um, I don't want to say, let me take a step back. You know, those, those people right now are, are struggling so much more than I am, mm-hmm. but I have the, forgive me, but I have the balls to complain yeah. uh, about how bad my life is or how I should have more, or how I need more, mm-hmm. um, when I'm not even willing to, you know, get on Facebook and help this guy out. Right. You know, because I have plenty, you know, I, yeah. I mean, we have plenty and, you know, it may not be millions. It may not be enough to be, you know, debt free quite yet, but you know, we have the belief and faith that God will get us there. Right. Um, but you know, we, we get so, we, we have so much and we are so ungrateful in it. And I, I've even been bad. You know, I, I made myself a goal this year to try to do a gratitude journal every day and I have fallen way far behind on that. Oh yeah. Um, but I mean, cause it's, it's just so important to take time each day. And I mean, I know I've said a lot here, but I, I what I really want to hit on is just to take time each day to list out, you know, three things. You know, I was making a goal to make five things. Make mm. three things that you're thankful for each day. I mean, I, I listened to a pastor once when I was a kid, um, and it stuck with me even then. You know, he was talking about how to how we should be grateful for for simple, stupid things. Yeah. You know, like God, I'm thankful that I've got toilet paper. God, I'm thankful I've got sheets. God, yeah. I'm thankful I've got a toothpaste. God, yeah. I'm thankful that I've got a cup to hold my toothbrush in. I know. You know, like just these, these things that we take for granted every single day. You know, forget the big things. Forget making it home every day. Forget having a job. Forget having a car. Forget having a family. Just the, the simple things of, like you said, getting out of bed every morning. Yeah. You know, just to, just to say, you know, I can get out of bed and walk across the floor. I'm not in immense debilitating pain every day. Right. You know, like I, I, my kids, they may be sick, but they don't have cancer. Yeah. You know, like I, I, I mean, just That's so many, one. so many, so many things, you know, that we, we struggle with every day. We complain about, and I mean, I know I hate, God knows I hate it when someone says, well, somebody's got it worse than you. <laughs> like, I, I hate hearing that. I do because I know how hard it is firsthand. You know, I will be firsthand honest testimony here that, you know, I sit here and complain all the time because I'm like, you know, I, I know, and I know how grateful I should be. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that I have a job, but you know, it's not, it's that, I don't even know how to say it. If it's just this ingrained psychological thing in me that, you know, it's like this discontentment that has rooted itself in my heart. Mm -hmm. That's so hard to tear out and uproot because it's, you know, God, I know I'm so thankful for the house that I have. I'm so thankful for the cars, so thankful for two healthy kids and a wife and so thankful for, you know, this church, so thankful for this, that, and the other. And I'm like, but man, if I just had a little bit more. Nah, yeah. And it's just like, you know, yeah, I'm I'm very thankful for these things, God. I'm thankful I have them. You know, I I tell you every day I'm thankful for them. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not dis thankful for them or however you say, ungrateful for them. But like, I just, just, it's just that, that human selfish flesh desire to yeah. have a little bit more, to have it a little bit better than the next person, mm-hmm. to have it a little bit better than I did yesterday. Mm-hmm. And it is such a hard thing to tear out and fight. Yeah. You know, and I catch myself doing it every single day, you know, where I, I, I try to make it a point of every time I pray, the first thing I, that comes out of my mouth are thanks. You know, mm-hmm. thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for what you've given me. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for this, that, this, that this that you know i try to make sure when i come to god that my heart is a heart of gratitude my position is that of gratitude before i ever ask for anything else yeah. um but then you you notice how much time you spend saying thank you versus how much time you spend saying please yeah you know and it, it's it should be the opposite um, you know, and, and again, I think, you know, just the being intentional about, you know, staying away from these, these social media, trying to, to get yourself to where you're, you know, you're not send, spending so much time looking at other people's stuff, thinking about other people's stuff, you know, where you're not, you know, doom scrolling marketplace all the time, where you're not sitting here scrolling through different websites, looking at different cars that you can't afford. You know, and I'm speaking to myself, you know, but I mean, you know, when you're not you, removing yourself from those situations and, and making sure that you're spending more time being mm-hmm. grateful than you are at Asking for things, yeah. you know, and, and I mean, because we we have, you know, as 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 crazy as this sounds, you know, I mean, I know that I tithe, I know I give my ten percent, but I could afford to give more, mm-hmm. and I think that that is something that everybody, you know, and I think you you said it several weeks ago you know, that we should be asking God to give us opportunities to give, mm-hmm. you know, where you said, you know, God lay my needs on someone's heart, but then also lay their needs on my heart, right? You know, and I think we need to get better about, and it's scary, it's difficult because, like I said, you know, we as Americans, we as human beings, we're scared to live on ninety percent of our paycheck. 
check. Well, yeah. what about 80? What about 70? Yeah. Right. You know, it, it, we have everything that we need. And because, you know, we're living on 80% of our paycheck, we still have more than 90% of the world. Yeah. yeah, and, yeah. and I think that that's what I was trying to say with all that big story there. But, you know, it's just that we, we really need to be more, more grateful and, and look at things with spiritual eyes. I, I really like that terminology there, you know, because we, we are so guilty oftentimes of looking at things with our physical eyes, like the Israelites did, mm-hmm. like that, that poor uh, widow who was about to make her last meal. Again, you know, uh, about like the disciples looking at things with physical eyes saying, you know, I don't have enough or this isn't enough like Moses or I'm a stutterer. I can't do this. I don't have the skills necessary. Um, and we're, we're limiting God so much. Yeah. And, and we're being so ungrateful and selfish at the same exact time. Yeah. I agree with that a, a thousand percent. I mean, it's just, you know, that, that heart placement makes such a big difference. And I know we talk so much about heart placement, but it's like, you know, if, if we are, Again, if if we're coming in here and trying to rationalize everything with our own eyes and with our own thought process and and things like that, it's like it, like like Nick say we are truly limiting a limitless God, and and it's not that we're putting cuffs on him, and it's not that we're saying that he can't do it. It's just that we're not accepting that he can do it. You know, it's it, it that's what it boils down to. And so when Jesus was like, "Yo, give it to me, and and, and let me do my thing with it." And then he, he, he looks up, he thanks God, and then he breaks the bread into pieces. And the Bible says that, that the, the disciples, right? He gives the bread back to the disciples. The disciples did absolutely, I want you to catch that. Like, that was so crazy to me. The disciples did absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. They, they, they didn't pray. They, they did didn't, that a lot. Yeah, I know, right? Like, <laughs> like, literally, like the same people who had such a problem and, 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 and was asking a question and wanted them to go home and all of this good stuff. He's like, you're going to feed them. I just need you to give me what you've got. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and so then he takes care of it and he gives it back to the disciples. And they're just like, they're just handing this bread out and handing this fish out. And they're like, I don't know where all this is coming from, but we're just going to keep giving and we're just going to mm-hmm. keep giving. And, and the Bible says, uh, and I, I don't like the whole point of me to, calling this to go boxes today was talking about the 12, uh, the 12 baskets that they had to take home, like the 12 mm-hmm. baskets of extra. And so that's where the to-go boxes came from. But I don't even think I, I even hit on that. Yeah, I, was I was just thinking say, about I that, too. I don't, I don't even think, think I even hit on that part. Like, that's hey, crazy. podcast exclusive. Here we go. Exactly. Here's the, here's the rest of the story, yeah. as, as Paul Harvey would say. Um, and, and so they just keep on giving till the Bible says that, that the 5,000 plus the women plus the children were, were fed. And that there was extra, that there was 12 baskets that they took away from this. Now, now I, it... it it blows my mind that at that moment in time that, that they would see something like this take place and happen and go, wait a minute. So, so you know, I'm one of these people that I like to dissect everything. I like to sit back and I'm like, oh, I'm like, all right, let's check this out. So, okay, so I gave what I had to Jesus. Jesus, thank God. Then he handed it back to me. And then as I was giving it out, it just was more, 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 more. So in my mind process, I'm thinking everything. Like, Lord, I'm giving you everything. Like, Lord, let me let me bring my car up here and give it to you. Yeah, here, here's these donuts. Yeah, here's these donuts. Yeah, like, like, Lord, like, I want you to multiply everything, you know? Like, like I'm going to give it all to you. That's the rational way of thinking spiritually, not not physically. Physically will tell you, hang on, hang on, hang on. Mm-hmm. Remember, save, 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 yep. save, 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 save. Spiritually says, give it. Give it, give, give it, man, give it. You don't think you have it, but, but uh, as I said today, man, tr- we, we truly don't know how much we have because we never give it all to him, mm-hmm. uh, to begin with. And, and if we would give it all to him, then he would supply our needs and then he would even go past our needs, but we never give it all to him. We, we stay in that gray area of, I'll give a little bit, Lord, but I don't know if I can trust you with it all, you know, and I, I think if there's anything, I think that it hits a large majority of Christians today, and, and we're not out there to throw stones because, like I said, I'm there, Nick's there. A lot of people are there, man, and, and we're not here to throw stones. We're here to say we see you, and we hear you, and we're with mm-hmm. you uh, in that area, and, and that we all, like all of Christianity, has to do a better job of, of, of not rationalizing with our eyes, but understanding with our spirit and with our heart and saying, man, I tell you what, if he can do it once— 
He can do it again. Um, I'm going to talk about just really quick before we go, just the uh, the bucket situation today. Um, if you got anything else to add, Nick, uh, before we before we talk about that for a second, no, go ahead. Um, so you know the bucket situation. I, I I'm always a what do you call that? Like whenever like a illustration. Uh, an type il- yeah, yeah. I, I'm an illustrator. I, I love people hearing the word of God, but I want people to see the word of God in action too. Maybe they understand it better that way. We got three tithe buckets here on the stage. And so today we emptied one out, we put a little bit of money in one, and we put the rest of the money in the other, and had three people stand up here holding a bucket. Now, the thing about it is, is that I asked the question, and I was setting people up, you know, I always like to set people up, but I asked the question, who has the most to give? Who has the most to give out of this? The person with nothing, the person with a little, or the person with a lot? Well, of course, you know, people were pointing back and forth and they were like, oh, you know, the person with the little, you know, like he's, he's got the most to give and the most to get out of this and then so on and so forth. And, and, and the point I was wanting to make to people was this, no matter if you have a thousand dollars, two dollars or no dollars, it doesn't matter. As long as you're giving what you have then that's all you can give. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's all you can give. So it doesn't matter. Some people might have to make bigger sacrifices than others. Some, But it it, it comes out of that, what do you have to give? Now, the coolest part to me was whenever the Holy Spirit was like, make them change buckets, make them change buckets, make them change buckets. And so we would change buckets. The first person who didn't have anything, I would switch over, and the person who had the big money, we would push it back to the first. And that's the way God's grace works, right? Mm -hmm. You start with nothing you give it to god god then blesses you with more than enough well what do you do with that more than enough you give it you keep on giving Mm -hmm. and so then the next bucket you get is not going to be as full because guess what you've given a lot and then the next bucket you give there may not be anything in it because why because now you've given you've poured out all that god's given you well guess what's going to happen that next bucket that comes around it's going to supply your every need again Mm -hmm. and then bam 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 and it's like i want people to get that and to understand that that you know this relationship with jesus man it's crazy sometimes and and it's confusing and it's uh like i i don't know man it's like riding it's like riding on a jet ski in the middle of a hurricane um <laughs> i mean if i you may not have a jet what ski what do i you, do i, was, I don't know I was just, gonna say, just hold on just hold just on, hold on just pray. hold on the waves are tall the storm is crazy and you don't know you're like how am i getting through this in a jet ski and you know the crazy part is, is that is that he's done far more with way less, um, and and for us to really trust uh, in this relationship with him, I mean that's that's all Nick. I think that he truly wants is our trust because because if he has our trust, then he has everything, um, and I think that's very. I, um, I think that's very evident in even physical relationships. I'll say that if you have somebody's trust, they'll let, they'll let you do anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like if, if I trust you, I'm like, man, I'll give you the keys. I'll give you the, I'll give you the information. I'll give, I'll let you watch my kids. I'll let you watch my kids anyways. Uh, you know, uh, like, you know, like we, like the, you know, if you have that trust factor, it's like your whole life is open. And I think that's what more than anything, like Jesus wants the trust factor with you. Like he just wants you to mm-hmm. trust him because if you trust him, then you're going to trust him with everything. I, I trust you, man. All right, cool. Well, what do you trust me? With? Oh, man, I trust you. Like I said, man, you want to watch my kids? You want to, you want to sit, you want to come over to my house? You want to eat with me? You want to, like, you want to go do something together? Oh, you need my car for a few? Okay. Like, you know, so there's a trust factor that's built up there and then everything else becomes available. And, mm-hmm. and, and I feel like it's the same way with Jesus. Like he's just reaching down and just wanting to know, Will you trust me? Mm-hmm. Even well, when it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Will you trust me? Will you will, will you trust me? And then, like, if your answer is yes, then your answer has to be yes for everything, mm-hmm. not just yeah, man. I trust you with uh, I trust you with my with my relationship, but my job, I'm, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, like whenever the answer is yes, and you go full blown trust with somebody, it's everything, and and it needs to be that way with Jesus too. Yeah, and I think one of the last things I want to hit on is. Um, backtracking what you said just a tad, but you know, to the point where some people, I think you said it this way, is that some people have to sacrifice more than others. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think we, we had this discussion um, several weeks ago. I don't think we've ever actually verbalized it on here, but we talked about how sometimes God requires us uh, to sacrifice more to cover for others. Yeah. Um, you know, we, I think it goes back to even the complaining that we talk about. You know, sometimes we can complain about uh, not having enough teachers, not having enough volunteers, not having uh-huh. enough uh, tithers, not having enough this, that, or the the other right. um, you know we, we get into that mode of complaining but we have the means to fill that need yeah uh, you know 
like I, you know, I may not like teaching every week, but I have to teach every week until someone else comes along to cover for me. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't like having to give more money than everybody else in the congregation, but you know, I have the means to do so. So I need to do that until someone covers for me. Right. Um, you know, and so sometimes you have to sacrifice more. Sometimes you have to give more, Mm. you know, when you have that, when you have the ability to teach, when you have the ability to do sound, when you have the ability to sing, when you have the ability to, to give financially, when you have the ability to do all these things, you know, but you're like, oh, you're sitting around all day complaining that nobody else is helping you out. You know, God just, God wants you to worry about you. Yeah. you know, are you being obedient? Yeah. Are you covering for, are, are you giving as much as you could? Are you yeah. serving as much as you could? You know, you're, there are, you, there is a lack of right now that you can fill completely. And eventually someone, you know, God will send someone along to reward your faithfulness mm-hmm. and to reward your obedience to cover for you. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, you, you only have to sacrifice for a time. You know, it's like one of those things where it's just like, okay, I'm having to sacrifice. I can give, but I'm also having to sacrifice a little extra because I'm having to cover for the other people that aren't here right now. I right. want to see the kingdom of God moved forward. I want to see these kids taught. I want to see, uh, you know, worship led. I want to see all these sorts of things. I have the skills, talents, abilities, money, extra, whatever to cover for that until mm. God sends more people through these doors to do that. Right. You know, we can't get a gun to people's heads and say, you're going to teach today or you're going to give more this week or you're going to do that. You know, we can't do that. We're responsible for us and what we can do. And what, you know, it's, we're responsible for, for being responsible responsible with what god has given us yeah uh with being you know sometimes that that requires us going above and beyond what other people do right sometimes that requires us to go above and beyond what we want to do or what feels comfortable to us Mm. um but again you know that goes back to trusting god you know do you trust god to take care of you even though he's asking you to give more than everybody else yeah you know are you trusting god to take care of you even though you have to serve more than everybody else yeah you know and and we we need to get back to that mentality sorry mindset and mentality of mentality mentality. that's a new word we should make that yeah uh but you know that mindset and mentality of you know i'm i'm here to do what god has asked me to do i don't need to worry about everybody else Mm -hmm. i don't need to worry i don't need to be worried about who's not here this week because they're doing this i don't need to be worrying about who's not giving even though they could Mm -hmm. i don't need to be worried about any of that what i need to do is what is what god wants me to do and i need to take care of his church his people and and i need to be responsible with what he's given me so that eventually he will reward me for that Mm -hmm. and you know he, he will send people he will send situations situations that will help out because you know and i I sometimes have to put that extra work in but if i don't trust god that he's going to take care of me while i'm putting that extra work in you know Mm -hmm. then i don't trust him at all yeah yeah absolutely and you know if you go back and read that story um as much as what you want to i think one thing you will never find in there is complaining Mm -hmm. um and and or worry about you know the disciples going to jesus and and they said you know this is but all we have but you, you never find or see a situation in there where it was like, well, these people should have brought more or these people should have done more or, hey, Jesus, what about these people? You know, instead yeah, they just people said, didn't think that they're going to be out here all day. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so it was like, you know, hey, you know, I was like, this is what we have. And then I'm going to give it to you. So therefore it can become what we need. And so let's drive that home one more time today, man, which is just just do you worry about you, uh, you know, and, and like Nick said, what God has called you to do. What God, what, it fulfill your calling, your purpose. And, and, you know, in, in the process of that, I promise you, God will work out and deal with other people. Like, that's mm-hmm. just the way it is. It's the way it's always been. So, you know, um, just, just do that instead. So we love you so much. We thank you so much. Thank you for being a part of this. And, uh, until we see you again, we love you and be blessed. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, 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 go. As always, this is PKR, and for my sidekick Nick, we say thank you very much for hitting that download button on People Suck, Love Them Anyways. Be sure to tell a friend, tell a family member to hit that download button as well. And as always, we say thank you. Be blessed. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, go.